today I need to do some what I call maintenance sewing. We've, as a family, have been medieval reenactors for more years than I'd like to state. My children have been dragged along to historical medieval events since, well, before they were born. In a week, we are going to Tewkesbury Medieval Festival, where we've been every year since we started doing reenactment in the 90s. And my son, being a teenager, has grown. So I need to make him some new braids, which are like pants, and some new hose, which are like trousers. He is not a keen reenactor, he's coming because he has to. He's not likely to be out there talking to the public, he just needs to blend in. So I am going to cheat hugely. All medieval clothes should of course be hand sewed. I'm gonna stick as much machine sewing as I can get away with into these because I need to get them done. Nevertheless, I want the shapes to be right. So I use this lovely book here, The Medieval Tailor's Assistant. I thought it would be good to double check everything I'm doing. Braids, we are going for these ones. I don't know if you can see that. Long braids, which you can wear either on their own or with split hose, separate hose. Again, a bit of a bastardised version rather than what's absolutely correct in this book because British reenactors tend to just kind of make it up a bit. That's not true. Research has moved on. Not all the kit has, but this is one of those 10 foot rule outfits, not super authentic. So he just needs to wear the clothes. Okay, I'm using a scrap of linen. It's nice and soft, it's been washed at least once. It may have been used for a tablecloth before it was used for clothing. It's been washed lots of times. Long-legged braids, made from a straight piece of linen with a girdle. And you can hear my poor husband suffering from hay fever, probably. The book says 170 centimetres, which is a lot of inches. I only have 130, so that's what we're going to have. It then says 68 folded in half, and I only have 64. Oh, that's plenty. I'm going to cut right along there that will be loads for him that's probably too much but it means he can grow into them there is something wrong with this cutting wheel and it doesn't cut properly but still quicker than my scissors which are really blunt at the moment need sharpening this is a new blade and it's still catching if anybody's got any ideas how to stop it so his hips are 32 inches that's only just going to fit because so the bagginess is also the seat depth so they need to be baggy so you can get a decent seat depth. That'd be the waist, yeah, for use of scraps. Two gussets is a five by five square. Okay, now I would love to say I'm going to hand sew this beautifully in the tradition of hand sews everywhere, but I'm not. I might fell the seams afterwards if I get time. But I'd rather get this done machined because sometimes you just gotta get it done. That goes in there and then that one goes in there. It's very clever this gusseting, it gives you extra movement and it's used for hundreds of years on underwear. This is similar to a gusset on a sleeve except it's only a triangle rather than a square. I'm going to give it a nice generous seam because I may well fell these. So this goes yeah. Why yes, dear viewer, I am unpicking. Who spotted? Then I put the gussets on backwards because that's what happens when you rush. It's that way round. So, fold them lengthways. Pin along here. Pins along the leg. And I've got the gusset here. So it's simply a matter of twiddling the gusset round, you can see that, to match, just edge to edge, and the triangle edge can go right to the end, because that's what going to be waist bandy. And then you get a little triangle there, so the trick is, when sewing it in the sewing machine, is to sew to there, stop, cut the thread, flip it over, start again. I, for years I used to try and push through, but you can't, it's two separate seams. So I'm going to carry on and finish that, and then try these on him, and then stick the waistband on. Okay, we're good, they fit, yay! So now I've got the gussets in, I can measure what that waistband needs to be. I know it's big, but the idea is they gather. So that is... So twice 23, so 46. That's ever so big. But that's fine, it needs to be big because just the way they work. So I need 46 inch strip of linen. Let us see what we can find. I found a scrap. This is why it's worth keeping all your scraps. 
quite a big scrap. It's not exactly the same colour, but it's comparable in softness. I've cut up a nice wide strip, kind of five inches wide, to give him rolling space. So I've gone for a machine valve seam. I need that seam to be flat because the drawstring's going to go through there. The lovely medieval tailor's assistant gives some clues on hand felling gussets. I think one of the things is don't be afraid to make a snip in the seam if you need to, to fold it over. So to fell, you need to cut one of the seams right down. This probably isn't a medieval technique, because the medievals were a waste of scrap. They probably just sewed it in the right place to start with, because of course it would all have been hand sewn. That goes flat, and then that comes under, like so. Do you remember those days where you can't remember how to do something you know how to do really well? Well, I do. And I guess that snipping of the seam allowance happens here where we're not sewing anymore so I might as well sew it first and then snip it. So you want to follow that fell down that one which means this one needs to be felled first which means this one needs to be cut down. So it's always a good idea to pin it all first and test it and do that one first. I don't like sewing in a rush but I really need to get this done. Teeny tiny stitches. I guess the thing with felling like this is it really doesn't take very long and it gives it a nice finish. Yeah, that didn't take two minutes, did it? So I shall fell the other one and the other side and then I can get on and then I can pop the waistband on. Okay, I've done the felling. I decided to do the whole lot. It only took about an hour, half an hour each side. I blamed certain sewing celebrities for their passion. The waistband is pinned on like a normal waistband. I'll machine sew the hidden seam and then hand fell the other one. I've sewed, machine sewed this together, which does make life a little more tricksy with bolt, but there we go. So I just got to fold this other edge under, pin it all, and then whip stitch that, and then do the front. Stolen from the previous pair. Go and soak him in. Okay, I've just realised that I haven't put the kind of eyelet things for holding the hose to the braise. Somewhere around here, there needs to be a buttonhole type hole for the braise to go. Hold on, I think it's going to be about halfway between the front and the side, so stay there. Just stick a pin in there, and then one in the same place the other end. I may take the cable out again, because I know it's long enough, because otherwise I'm going to just end up sewing it in place. I'm basically drawing a rectangle, which is where I want the outside of the stitches to go, and then the actual slit is there. Friction pen will iron out. I could do it with charcoal or something terribly, period, but I'm not going to. Cut it with scissors. Not quite enough for me. There we go. Dot inside the fabric just to anchor this. I don't really want to make a knot because they're really irritating when they're a knot. Just buttonhole stitch. I find it weird, maybe humbling sometimes, that stitches like this have been used for thousands of years to do the same thing. Secure an edge. You know, running stitch is a kind of obvious thing, but buttonhole blanket stitch is one of those slightly clever, not tricky, but it's a clever idea. And there's the oh so important holes for the laces. Now I need to put the drawstring back in and we're done. So one of the little tricks I'm doing is I'm sticking a few stitches through the drawstring at the back. It stops kids pulling the drawstring out, which is so annoying because they always do it when you're in a rush, when you're tired. By stitching it at the back, and it means when they pull the drawstring, can't come out. So that's those done.
goes. Now, the medieval tailor's assistant has some really detailed instructions for nice fitted hose. I just need some leg coverings that will make a teenage boy look vaguely medieval. Bearing in mind he'll probably spend most of the day in his tent anyway. Sorry, son. I just need to work out the shape. So the front is like that, and then it goes down the leg. Um, they have this lovely foot shape, and they curve it. The proper hose should curve around the leg. Curve around the leg, so that's not very helpful, is it? It would go like that. This needs to be at least 13 inches. This needs to be about 18 inches. I told you it was skinny. Inside leg, so that needs to be 25. And that going right up to his waist would be 35. So I think as I'll cut it out, sew the inner seam. Cut it out, sorry, that's the actual measurements. I need to add some ease. Plus ease, plus seam allowance. Cut it out, sew at the back seam, try it on him, because then I can always trim this down. So I'm going to draw this on with a friction pen, not a sharpie. So 35 inches, which is the length, goes from there to there. 10 inches down would be where the side starts, and at 10 inches down, that has to be 21, including seam allowance. 10 and a half, one there, and one there. It seems awfully big, but unlike the medievals, I am not desperately trying to preserve fabric, so. And the bottom needs to be 15, and there, and there. They don't look long enough now. But because that is the inside of the leg. Okay. Well, if they're too short, I'll put an extension on the end, and if they're too big, I'll cut them off. So what I actually need to do is draw this line, drafting straight onto the fabric. It's always fun. There. And then use one of these rulers. I don't know if you can see me. To get the line parallel. That. Get rid of that one. And that line needs to be... 15, so seven and a half. There, that is about right actually. Why does that look so. Come on, leg sleeve. They really are leg sleeves. So I'm going to cut that out and then just use it as a copy. Go try it on him. Right, I've just been and tried them on him. I discovered they're wonky here, so that's fine. I'm just going to cut it off. This is not like we are going to a pristine pan, so that's my mistake. And it was a little bit high anyway. Ugh, difficult to cut an angle so that I'm not in the way of the camera. Like that. Okay. And I, I tried them on at him, and actually he's fine with them a bit tighter, so I've got a, a nice line here on the pins to give us a nice shape. Look at that. That actually looks like a bear hose. That, so that would be his actual line. I guess he should be flat felled, so I'll do a 5 8 seam roughly. If I leave that line on, that'd be a good sewing line. There we go. They were a wee bit long, but I think I'll just take that up rather than cutting it because boys grow really fast. So now if I unpin this, I get a shape quite like the one in the book. It doesn't go quite in as far at the foot. So now I just need to cut another version of this with that. Sew the backs up. Flat fell, hem the edges, sew a lace on because this is ease and it won't be seen. And they'll be done, they're pretty quick once you've got the fitting. So that's sewed. I just simply need to trim this, fell it, hem the edges. Done. Oh, and to tie them onto the hose, the books is a button. I'm going to just put a tie. Usually would point two holes through. Again, for ease of the boy, I might just sew a cord on. Nobody will know. So one day I will learn that rushing doesn't make things any quicker. I thought I would just try these on him again, just to make sure. And one of them's tighter than the other. So this top one is the one that fit. I mean, to be honest, the other one does fit, but it's very snug and he's not keen to wear very snug hose. So I've got two choices at this stage. I can either try and make this one bigger, half an inch, but of course half an inch is multiplied by two, so that's an inch smaller. Two choices, I can either expand these 
which would be the medieval way, or I can just cut another one, which is the modern way, and is almost certainly what I'm gonna do. That's really annoying. I'm gonna pick this one and try and work out what the difference is, and then cut another piece. <laughs> through it to make sure it doesn't shift. I'm actually reusing the points from his old hose, which are way too small now, but it's quite a nice cotton tape. There we go, done. So that's now easily tied. A little string to tie those up. And then these go on the legs. One of those, those go through there. And just ties like that. Once he's got it fitted, he can leave it tied. and have to undo it. Simple but effective. There we go. Brazen hose in a couple of days.